My name's Simon, I'm from Southampton, I work for EY, and today I'll be answering some questions for the EY Foundation. In terms of education background, I went to a state school and sixth form college, and then I did a BA in Economics and Management at Oxford University, which took three years, and then I joined EY on the grad scheme. Career to date, I worked for four years in the Southampton office in the audit practice, make, working mainly on clients in the south of England. Uh, and then I transferred to the London office where I've been working for the past year in the transactions business. In terms of highlights, I was recently working in Blackpool on BAE Systems where they make the uh, Eurofighter Typhoon and F-35 fighter planes. So it was pretty cool um, seeing where those are made. And I also recently did a Synergy case for WH Smith, which was interesting to work on a business that you've uh, grown up with, but you might not necessarily know what goes on underneath the surface. Talk about different roles across the business. So EY is a global professional services firm. It employs over 250,000 people and it's divided into four main service lines. So you have assurance, which is about giving confidence to different stakeholders about financial and non-financial information. You've got a tax practice that provides tax services to individuals and companies. There's an advisory practice which does some more traditional consulting work. And then there's the transactions practice, which is consulting with a specific transaction focus, so looking at companies buying each other. My typical day in the role. So this really depends on what stage of the project that I'm at. Most of the projects would start with a phase where we are meeting with the client a lot, so lots of face-to-face uh, -face interviews, trying to understand what goes on in the business and then it goes into more of an analytical phase so we've receiving lots of data from different sources working a lot in excel uh, using data analytics to produce insights and then we go into a final report writing stage which is pulling everything together into a, probably a powerpoint deck that you can present to the client and show what value we found In terms of the top three skills that I would look for in a new employee, firstly, I would just say a willingness to learn. Nobody expects you to come in knowing everything, and it's just about being willing to engage and try new things. Second one, as we'll sort of link to that, is resilience. So when things don't go so well, being able to take on board constructive feedback, I think, is really important. And lastly, I would say communication skills. So I'm thinking, is this somebody that can work productively on a team? Is this somebody who can be put in front of a client? And as you go through your career, communication skills will just continue to be important. Number one piece of advice for CV and interview. On the CV, I would say it's really important to know your audience. Think about it from the perspective of the hiring partner or the HR manager who's looking at your CV? Have you presented it well? Have you met all the requirements in the job description? Do you look like an interesting candidate? And then in terms of the interview, I'd say there's always that moment at the end of an interview when they say, have you got any questions for me? And I think if you've done your background research, you should be able to come up with a couple of insightful questions that you can ask the person just to show that you're really interested, passionate, and you've done a bit of homework. Final piece of advice. This is something I first heard about a few years ago, and it's stuck with me ever since. And what it is, is the distinction between a fixed and a growth mindset. So someone with a fixed mindset tends to believe that their abilities and skills are fixed, and it can lead them to feeling threatened by the success of other people. Whereas somebody with a growth mindset who believes that their skills can be developed through practice, uh, it just makes them a view the success of others as something that they can learn from and something that's inspirational. And just having that simple mindset shift 
can really flip how you view a situation and how much you value effort and persistence in the face of a setback.